Welcome back. This is Mrs. Rubright, Advanced Geometry, Lesson 3.6, Prove Theorems About Perpendicular Lines. You guys should have already started by copying the four-year notebooks on pages 182 to 184. All right, so in the diagram, um, for some reason these arrows don't really come out on my computer, so I'm just going to add them in. So line AB is perpendicular to line BC. What can you conclude about angle 1 and angle 2? So based on the copy for your notebooks, does anyone have anything that they could say? Yes. So she's saying theorem 3.9 says what? Perfect. So if two lines are perpendicular, then they intersect to form four right angles. So you conclude that angle 1 and angle 2 are both 90 degrees, and therefore they are congruent. If we're taking it back to before we just learned this, right, before we just copied our four, four our notebooks, then we could have said that, well, if angle 1, <coughs> if, um, if this line is perpendicular to this line, then it intersects at a 90 degree angle, right? And then if it intersects at a 90 degree angle, and these are linear pairs, linear pairs are supplementary, therefore they're both 90, therefore they're congruent. So there's multiple ways to prove this. It's not just um, one way. So you could use theorem 3.9 or you could use the definition of perpendicular that it's 90 degrees, therefore the linear pair being supplementary, they're both 90, they're both congruent, right? So there's multiple ways to do these problems. Alright, so to prove that if two sides of two adjacent angles are perpendicular, then the angles are complementary. So we're trying to prove that ray ED, we're given that ray ED is um, perpendicular to ray EF. So we know that these two rays are perpendicular. So what do we know based on the fact that they're perpendicular? If they're perpendicular, then they are what? They form a right angle, right? So we have our given, that they're, they're perpendicular. What we know because of that is that it's a right angle. Why? Definition of perpendicular. So you could use definition of perpendicular or you can use your new thing, which is that the perpendicular lines bisect to, um, to form four right angles. So once again, you could use the definition of right angle, <clears throat> or you can use our new theorem 3.9. So there are multiple ways to get this right. So based on the fact that it's a right angle, we know if it's a right angle, it's 90 degrees. Why do we know that? Did I say definition of right angle here? I meant definition of perpendicular, right, or theorem 3.9. So here, if it's a right angle, it's 90 degrees. Why? Definition of right angle. All right, so now we have angle 7 plus angle 8 equals the whole angle. Part plus part equals whole. What is that? Part of an angle plus the other part of the angle equals the whole angle. Part of transitive, what are we sub oh, subbing a whole side for a whole side? I don't see any substitution going on here. Part plus part equals whole. Part plus part equals whole. Angle, addition, postulate. All right, so now this is the same, this is the same, this got switched out. Well, why did it get switched out? Because of up here. So that is what? Transitive, subbing a whole side for a whole side. But you guys are smarter than your textbook publishers because they put substitution. Um, that's like writing next to a picture of a square that it's a rectangle. Yeah, a square is a rectangle. But more specifically, it's a square because all sides are equal, right? So, yes, it's substitution. But more specifically, it is transitive. It is transitive because you're subbing a whole side for a whole side. It is a more specific type of substitution. So this should say transitive. Right? Transitive property. All right. So angle 7 and angle 8 are complementary. Well, if they equal 90, they're complementary. How do you know that? Anybody? Definition of complementary angles. You guys see how this is the same thing that we keep doing all over and over again. If there's a vocabulary word, the next line is what you know because of the vocabulary word, and the reason is the definition of the vocabulary word. If you're dealing with segments and part plus part equals whole, you're talking about segment addition postulate. If you're dealing with angles, part plus part equals whole, it's angle addition postulate. So we're using the same kind of reasons over and over and over again. So you should be able to kind of be able to figure out how to do these um, a little bit easier each time that you do more of them, right? It gets a little bit more comfortable and you kind of get a feel for what's actually going on. Alright, so given that the measure of angle ABC, ABC, this angle right here is congruent to ABD. Well, if they're congruent, then they are what? If they are congruent, they are equal. Alright, well, if these two are congruent and they form a linear pair, then they are 90 degrees each, right? 
meaning that angle 3 plus angle 4 equals 90. They are complementary. They are acute, right? So those are things that we can know about angle 3 and angle 4. So it says they are complementary. If angle ABD is a right angle, since two lines intersect to form a linear pair of congruent angles, theorem 3.8. So 3 and 4 are complementary, and they are also congruent. Wait, no, sorry. 3 and 4 are not congruent, sorry. A, B, C, and A, B, D are congruent, but 3 and 4, we don't know that they're congruent. We know that they are complementary. We know they add to 90, but we don't necessarily know if they are equal. We don't know if they're 45 each because there's no information for us to know that, and we don't assume in geometry ever. All right. <coughs> Determine which lines, if any, must be parallel in the diagram. Explain your reasoning. So can you guys take a peek at this and tell me if you see any lines that you know are parallel and why? Okay, so someone's saying that P and Q are parallel, and how do you know that? All right, so I'm hearing someone say because there's a 90 degree angle here and here. What are these two angles? They are what? Consecutive interior angles. If consecutive interior angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. So that's consecutive interior angles converse. That's how we would have done it before today's lesson. So with today's lesson, is there a new way of saying that P and Q are parallel? By theorem 3.12, right? Lines P and Q are both perpendicular to S, so by 3.12, P is parallel to Q, all right? And then there's another set of parallels, right? So S is parallel to T. How do we know S and T? We do not have alternate interior. We are looking, you can only look at one transversal at a time. And on this transversal, there's only one thing. And on this transversal, there's two things. And they are what? What is their, their corresponding angles, right? So on the corresponding angles converse, if corresponding angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. Corresponding angles converse, which we could also use today, theorem 3.12, right, can also tell you that they are um, parallel. So you have two different options now to prove those lines parallel. Is B parallel to A? Is B parallel to A? Are, are these two parallel and why? So we have this and this, right? What are these? Consecutive interior angles. If consecutive interior angles are supplementary, then the lines are parallel. Consecutive interior angles converse. And based on today's lesson, what could you say? Good. Lines perpendicular to a transversal theorem. Good. And then is P perpendicular to C? Is P, or sorry, is B perpendicular to C? Are these perpendicular? All right, I'm hearing yes. And the reason? It's yes by the lines perpendicular to a transversal theorem. So C is parallel to D by the lines perpendicular to transversal theorem. Therefore, B is perpendicular to C by the perpendicular transversal theorem. Okay? So even though it's not marked, you can use those theorems to prove it. So on this one, the sculpture on the right is drawn on a graph where units are measured in inches. What is the approximate length of SR, the depth of the C? So we want to find the distance right here. So we're using these two points, and we're throwing them into the distance formula. So the square root of x2 minus x1. What did I just do? I did y2 minus y1. But it's the same thing. So I can do y2 minus y1 squared plus x2 minus x1 squared square root. Why can I do x2 minus x1 squared, y2 minus y1 squared? Why can I flip-flop them? Because it's addition right, because it's addition. So subtract your x's subtract, and square it, subtract your y's and square it, add them together and take their square root. So right here we'd have bam, bam, negative 10 squared is going to be 100. Here we would have 15, and 15 squared is 225. So 100 plus 225 is 325. So the square root of 325, which is approximately... 18 inches. If I wanted this in simplest radical form, 
What perfect square goes into 325 that you can tell right off the bat? 25. 25 goes into 100 four times, so that's 4, 8, 12, 13 of them, right? 13 25s. So the square root of 25 is 5, so 5 rad 13 is in simplest radical form. So if I need to do to simplify your radicals, 5 rad 13 is in simplest radical form. Alright, so now moving on to the real stuff, the hardcore, annoying Algebra 1 on like but like to uh to an extreme right this is going to be like algebra one but a page worth of work all right guys so here we go what is the distance from point a to line c so we need to know the distance from a to c so distance is always the perpendicular distance right so i need to know okay perfect i have to find the perpendicular line so the first thing i'm going to do is perpendicular lines have negative reciprocal slopes right so what is the slope here so if I look at this point right here, and I go up 1, 2, over 1, up 1, 2, over 1. So this has a slope of 2. Do you guys agree? So the negative reciprocal slope would be a slope of negative 1 half. So down 1 over 1, 2. Down 1 over 1, 2. Down 1 over 1, 2. So of course, they couldn't give me like a nice line because that would just make too much sense. It would be like way too nice of a person to like give you a line that like, you know, cuts through like at a nice perfect point. But why would they do that if that just makes your life easy, right? So that that can't be because, you know. So we need to know where do these two lines intersect at this non-perfect point right there, right? So we need to go back to our Algebra 1 brains and think about equations of lines. So the equation of this line, we have a y-intercept of 2 and a slope of 2. So that is y equals mx plus b. And this equation we just created is, let's see, so we have a, hold on, let me think. All right, so we're going down 1 over 2, down 1 over 2. So down 1 over 2 is like down a half over 1. So this is definitely at a half. So I can do that without doing the math. That's nice. Okay, so this is going to be y equals negative 1 half x plus one half. Are you all with me so far? Okay, so now that I have the two equations, remember that thing called system of equations, right? So they're both solved for y, set them equal and solve. So 2x plus 2 equals negative one half x plus one half. So why am I doing this? I'm doing this because where these two lines intersect, I'll get that point, right? If I do a system of equations, I'm solving for this point. And ultimately, my goal is to know the distance from here to here. So I need to know this point and this point to throw it into the distance formula, right? So I'm just trying to find out what is this point. So um, I'm going to get rid of fractions just because I don't like them. So I'm going to multiply by 2 on both sides because I know most of my students hate fractions. So I'm going to distribute just to get rid of these fractions first and foremost. So I have 4x plus 4 equals negative x plus 1. Add x to both sides, 5x plus 4 equals 1. Subtract 4 on both sides, 5x equals negative 3. Divide by 5 on both sides, x equals negative 3 fifths. It's just such a nice number. It was so kind of them. So now that we have our x value, we need to plug back into either equation to get our y value, right? So let's plug into this nicer looking one. So um, y equals 2 times negative 3 fifths plus 2. Negative 6 fifths plus 2. We need to have a common denominator. So 2 fifths is 10 fifths, right? 2 over 1 is 10 over 5. Um, so negative 6 plus 10 is 4, 4 fifths. So our y is 4 fifths. So our coordinates for this point are our first one, this point right here that they gave us is negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 3, 2. And the second point, the one that we just discovered, this point right here, is negative 3 fifths, comma, 4 fifths. So now we need to take these two points right here, and we need to throw them into the distance formula. So our distance equals the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 
minus y1 squared square root. All right, so 3 fifths might bam, bam, right? So this is over 1. Make it over a 5, you'd have 15. 15 minus 3 is 12. So you have 12 fifths squared, such kind numbers, plus make this over a 5, so it's going to be a 10. Bam, bam. You're going to have negative 6 over 5 squared. And then you're going to take the square root. All right, well, 12 squared is 144. 5 squared is 25. Negative 6 squared is 36. 5 squared is 25. At least those have common denominators, right? 144 plus 36. 180? No. 180? Over 25? Square root? All right, well... The square root of 25 is 5, I know that much. Square root of 180. I know 9 times 20, right? 4 times 5. So this is going to be 3. And the square root of 9 is 3. The square root of 4 is 2. So 6 rad 5. Right? Because 6 times 6 is 36. So 36 times 5 is 180. 36 times 5. Yes? So 6 rad 5 over 5 is in simplest radical form. That is the distance. If they didn't want, <coughs> want it in simplest radical form, do 180 divided by 25 equals square root symbol, and you should get your answer. This is not wanting to show. Anyway. Okay. So that was annoying, right? Pretty annoying. What is the distance from line C to line D? So from C to D, you need to, let's clear all this stuff. From C to D, let's see. We need negative reciprocal slope, right? So we were here up 1, 2 over 1. So a slope of 2, negative reciprocal is down 1 over 2. Down 1 over 2. Obviously not a nice point again. Because why would they make our lives easy? So to find this distance right in here, we need to know these two points. Well, we know the first point. The first point is negative 1, 0. It's this point we need to find. So we need to do a system of equations. So we need to know the equation of this line, which is minus 2. So this is going to be y minus 2. Our slope here is up 1, 2 over 1. So 2x minus 2. And then our equation here y equals, our slope was negative one-half, right? What's our y-intercept? Minus two? No, for, oh, sorry, for this one, it's not minus two, my bad. This one has a y-intercept of, let's see, down one over one, two, so down a half over half, so it's negative one-half. So now you're going to have to do a system of equations with this equation and this equation to get this point. Once you get this point, you have this point and this point to use for the distance formula. Is this making sense, guys? So let's do it. It's so fun. So 2x minus 2, system of equations, since they're both solved for y, I can set them equal to each other. The first thing I'm going to do is get rid of these fractions because nobody has time to deal with those. 4x minus 4 equals negative x minus 1, right? Add x to both sides, 5x minus 4 equals negative 1. Add 4 to both sides, 5x equals 3, so x equals 3 fifths. All right, so this point right here is at 3 fifths comma something. Well, comma what? Let's see. y equals 2 times 3 fifths, plug into one of the equations, minus 2. I chose this one because it doesn't have fractions. So I have 6 fifths minus 2 over 1. Turn that into a 5, negative 4 fifths. That's my x, y. So I have that point, 3 fifths, negative 4 fifths, and I have this point at negative 1, 0. So I'm going to take those two points and I'm going to throw them into the distance formula. So I have negative 1, 0. 
and three-fifths, negative four-fifths. All right, so x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared square root. Three-fifths, bam, bam. One is the same thing as five-fifths, right? So five, six, seven, eight-fifths squared plus negative four-fifths squared square root. Eight times eight is 64. Five times five is 25. Four squared is 16. Five squared is 25. 64 plus 16, 80 over 25. Square root of that. It's over 5. All right, so square root of 80. What perfect squares go in there? 4 times what? 20, which is 4 times 5. So square root of 4 times square root of 4 times square root of 5. Square root of 4 is 2. Square root of 4 is 2. Square root of 5 is square root of 5. 4 rad 5, which means that it's really 16 times 5. Does that make sense? Do you guys get how I'm tr um, trying out perfect squares? I know that 80 is 4 times 20. That's a perfect square. 20 is 4 times 5. That's a perfect square. 2 times 2 times rad 5, 4 rad 5. So I have 4 rad 5 over 5 for my distance between C and D. I know, this is like annoying. All right, so graph the line y equals x plus 1. What point on the line is the shortest distance from the point for 1? What is the distance round to the nearest tenth? So for this one, I'm going to do this one on graph paper just because it's um, going to be faster and easier to do so. So let's just get that done. Let's reopen this. Alright, so it was asking us for y equals x plus 1, the shortest distance to the point for 1. All right. So let's go back here. We're at positive 1, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1. So here's our line. I don't have a straight edge, so I'm going to use my remote. Not so perfect, but whatever. All right, and then 4, 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1. We have to get into the elevator before we can go up or down. All right, so the shortest distance between these. So I'm looking for this distance. So let's think. This is up 1 over 1. So my negative reciprocal slope instead of 1 is negative 1, right? So down 1 over 1. Or up one, negative one. Up one, negative one. Oh my goodness, they are so nice to me on this problem. They gave me a perfect intersection. And these are the types that we actually don't mind doing. This works better. Okay. So we have a point. And then the point that they want it to go from is 4, 1, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 1. So we have 4, 1. And we have 1, 2, 1, 2, 3. 2, 3. So to find that distance, we just need the distance formula. y2 minus y1 squared plus x2 minus x1 squared square root. 1, bam, bam, negative 2 squared plus 2 squared square root. Negative 2 squared is 4, 2 squared is 4, the square root of 8. All right, which is 4 times 2 or 2 rad 2. So it's 2 rad 2, or if you took your calculator and did it as a decimal with a calculator that works, okay, 8, calculator, 8 square root button, you get approximately 2.83. So 2.83 or 2 rad 2. And this is the type that will be on your test. It's not going to be with really ugly numbers, okay? But it's important to know how to do those two. I hope you guys enjoyed this lesson. Have a great day. Like and subscribe.